Dahlia, welcome to Becoming the Channel. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. We, just before we started recording, we're talking about the Neo personality profile that you took a while ago. I would think it was like last year around this time. Mm -hmm. And about how you've been going through this and making the transition out of the medical model, out of um, the um, the old way of doing things and moving into this new this new place of really honoring your intuitive abilities, honoring who you are as a spiritual and divine and eternal being. So welcome to the show. Thank you. I am very pleased to be here and this is a perfect time. I know it really is. So I like to start with a question just to kind of get us in a space of opening up and, and sharing some things about you with, with our audience. So are you ready for your first question? I am ready. Okay. So when you were a little kid, what did you tell people you wanted to be when you grew up? A dancer. I always wanted to be a dancer, which explains so much. Like I have the movement medicine membership coming out. I use movement, somatics. It is part of the channeling. So it's interesting that you start with that first question. When you were a little kid and you wanted to be a dancer, what kind of dance did you imagine yourself doing? Well, I grew up with musicals and going to performances. And so it was always on a stage that was always in the vision. And so I've danced on actually many stages as to, as part of like my career, but it was always um, Broadway. That has not happened. <laughs> yeah. 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 You never know. I'm about to be, I'm about to be in a cabaret show. Really? Totally. I'm so excited. It's bucket list. <laughs> How fun is that? How fascinating. I love that we started with that question and how it threads through your whole life. I, this is a second question that just occurred to me. It's not on my list, but tell us about your career, kind of your career path from, so you're a little kid and you want to be a dancer. And then what happened? How did your career evolve? It started as dance. And it's really interesting because this moves into like the work that I do. It started as dance and then it went into art. And although my minor in undergrad was dance, which I discontinued for personal reasons, you know, the career of like what I wanted to do did get halted at around 15 or 16 when anxiousness, depression, diagnoses all came up. And so it, it led me exactly where I was supposed to go. But, you know, in my career, so my undergrad was an artist and I created with my hands a lot of uh, visual art. I actually have some of it behind me, ceramics, drawing, um, always the human form, the human body. You can't really see it. It's not up yet on my wall yet, but it's, I mean, it's just gorgeous. Uh, and then working as an artist, I was struggling. I was always the teacher as well, which then led me, I didn't want to struggle anymore. This was in my 20s. So it led me back to school to get my master's degree in occupational therapy, which I thought hung the moon. And I thought it was absolutely everything. And through that career, I really learned about neuroscience, sensory processing, the neuroatypical spicy, along with, you know, def different physical disabilities. And I became the savior, so to speak, in the sense that in my career, I think because of my channeling abilities, my patients had incredible outcomes, regardless of what it was. So you were able to early on shift consciousness in order to bring about real world transformation, which is part of spiritual intelligence, of course. Yes. And we can create the, the high vibration and the low vibration. Mm -hmm. And it was all created. Yeah. And then, you know, COVID happens, more spiritual awakening. I transition out of healthcare into coaching, really using my gifts that I've learned and created and, you know, curated for this entire life with a lot of other past life mm -hmm. knowledge that I don't know why I know, but I do know. And it works for massive transformations for my clients and, and for myself. And I love just sharing that with the world. So it's just, it's been a very interesting transition. There was a lot of tears, just like everybody. There was pain. There was, but then there was like, there was so much lightness that came with it and freedom. Now, you and I have talked 
several times. So I know that there's a story here around you leaving healthcare and a pretty, somebody really close into you is kind of a big deal in allopathic medicine. Do you want to, do you want to take a, take a run at that one? I will. And I will combine it with like your first question, your second question. Uh, my father is a retired neurologist. I grew up with the brain like a brain in the corner, in the breakfast room, in jelly. I grew up going, doing rounds with him and learning about the cerebellum, the parietal, the temporal, the, the motor functions associated with them, not necessarily emotional components. And I was a very emotional being, but it's like, I grew up loving the structure. And because of that, I always wanted to do something with neuro. Yes. And, and that was my focus. Uh, and it very much still is. I just do it completely differently now. And it's why that attachment to not just like that father figure from a career that's also part of this like transition, but it's also, I received so much, so much gratification of being a part of that matrix. It did serve a lot of purposes. It's funny that you bring up the word matrix. <laughs> and here's why. You know, my background is as a psychologist. I worked in healthcare for a long time. And before that, I worked in biotech. So I was deep in matrixy, you know, 3D healthcare medical model situation. Both of my sisters are physicians as well. So we kind of have this, we're pretty grounded in my family in the medical model. I had some, I'm going to say, I'm going to call it what, what I experienced as trauma as I was leaving the medical model and the healthcare system to go out on my own in the work that I do now. What was it like for you as you started extracting yourself from the healthcare matrix? I think the universe had a plan for me. I know it did because I was able to extract myself because I moved across the country and got married and started this whole new life and everything from the old life were just like shattered and I wasn't prepared for that. And so that in itself, like that was very traumatizing because I was trying to hold on to what was not knowing it needed to go. Mm -hmm. Conversations, a, a lot of professionals that I am um, friends with are very supportive of the route that I have gone. Um, but I also, there, there's this, there's this last piece that I'm like, I'm in it right now where it's like this final, I don't want to say sever because I still bring in the traditional modalities because it all matters when people are really healing. And so it's like, I have an honor for it. I also recognize the pitfalls and how it can steer people in a direction that isn't as supportive. And I wanna support people for the whole body, not just some of the piece. And I don't wanna put a Band-Aid on anything. So you know that belief helps fuel my decision to be able to do this. My father does not understand what I'm doing, but he knows that I'm smart because he's seen the changes I've made with clients. <laughs> That's amazing. And it's always good to have a dad who, even if they don't believe, even if they don't understand you, they believe in you and um, see, you know, the, the results are so important, aren't they? Even more important, I think, than the process is the results that you get. It's interesting that you say that because so many people are outcome-based, results-driven, and so much of my work now, because that's how I used to operate. I think that's how healthcare very much operates, is results-driven. So yeah. now it's very much about like, can we enjoy the journey even though we don't have the outcome yet or the result that we're looking for yet? Because it's already there. It's just us aligning to that frequency, which is a very different energy than healthcare model protocols. Yeah. That's not, let's go to a different one. Like, And I loved that life but I didn't realize that I was like running in a trauma cycle as well, because it's just what's bred. It is. It, I think that especially the high performers who get into medicine often will find themselves on this gerbil wheel uh, that it's very difficult to get off of because there's the money and the prestige gets wrapped up into the matrix. And in my experience, as I've worked with, with clinicians who have been extracting themselves from that, that's been the toughest part of it is who am I? What, what is my identity if I am not part of this medical system? If I'm not a well-respected, 
you know, fill in the blank, OT, PT, physician, psychologist, what am I, who am I? And that's part of the evolution, I think. That was part of the hardest part for me over the last few years, that right there. The was, identity, your identity, oh, who identity. am I? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, there was so much self-worth and pride wrapped up yeah. in credentials and who I am, who I was, like how I served. And mm -hmm. it's a whole thing. Yes. It is a whole thing. And I remember when I was leaving the university, I was I had, I think I had just left and I was on my sister's couch having a panic attack and unable to articulate. She said, did they ask you to leave? And I said, no. She said, why are you crying so much? Well, it was, tr it was a trauma response to extracting myself from this prestigious organization. And who am I if I'm not part of this brand? Who am I if I'm not one of the many cogs in this great machine? And it turns out, of course, as you know, we're so much more than that, but it's, it's a mind game, isn't it? It is a mind game. And it's, it's funny because that's exactly where my mind is right now, because as I'm making this, like what I feel like a final leap, it's probably not a final leap, but that's what it feels like into the really, truly like the energy medicine specialist, which really encompasses everything, like how I help clients. Yes. yes. Like that makes all the sense in the world. And I feel that in my being is like, yes, that's, that is it. Like, there's no question there, but it took this long for me to like do that, but there's still that piece where it's like, ooh, I'm not a healthcare professional anymore. And it's just a label. It's just a story, just like everything else. It is a story and it is a label, but it's also a big part of our identities. It's like a chip that got put into us probably from the time, I mean, listen, you've heard my story. I wanted to be a doctor when I was like six. I always knew I would be that. And so to extract yourself from this old way of doing things from, from the, the medical model and the th kind of 3D old world, old school way means that it's, a, it's an identity death in some ways. What do you think about that? I think it's an ego death. And it's mm -hmm. so funny because even in my stories a few days ago, I was like, there's an ego death going on here with the Lionsgate portal. Uh, because of the work that I've been doing. And it is an identity death. And, and I'm still in that process of like allowing that to be, knowing that that's what's happening and having the massive faith and trust that it is going to be even better than anything else that has ever been created, you know, in my life and for others. And there's that space between the identity death and then, okay, so what's now? That is so uncomfortable. And that's what, you know, where for me, I'll be like back and forth, back and forth. But I'm realizing that there's balance there. It's not to be back and forth. It's to, for me, I'm supposed to integrate both sides. And that's where I need to hold true, uh, true and strong. That is so such a good point. You know, in the mastermind that I run, for women like you and me, really, it's the, the allied health professionals, the healthcare professionals who are moving into and actually bringing in new earth processes, procedures, technologies into their practice today. So think psychologists and speech pathologists and OTs and all of us who are doing this work. And that's one of the major things is that I always say, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Instead, there has to be an integration because we're actually bridges. So if we throw out everything that we've learned and all of our knowledge and experience from this lifetime and say, I have to start over and go do you know angel readings in that crappy place in Sedona, there are good places in Sedona too, but there's one in mind that I'm like, if that's what I think I have to do in order to express myself as a spiritually intelligent leader, then I've missed the the whole point of the, of the evolution and the transformation. What do you I, think about that? I completely resonate with that. No, I'm actually like, I want you to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> well, really, I mean, when we think about that, and, and this is, this is part of the deeper conversation about those professionals, we have our credentials, we have our licenses, we have all of the 
the mantles and the accolades and the and the the uh, prestige of our field and yet there's something deep inside of us that's saying but there's a different way and we don't have to do it anyway so we get all of this stuff and then we have to shed it but we have to i think keep the gifts of it because we still have to be able to speak both languages we have to be able to speak light language and we have to be able to speak 3d language we have Absolutely. to we're yeah, the translators that's exactly right. That's the best way to describe it. And it's it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful place to be to be able to be to be able to be that bridge. And that's where, you know, the what is it, recovering healthcare professional in me. Um, <laughs> that's such a good way of <laughs> I'm a recovering HCP. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's a different, uh, different kind of HCP, whatever. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's funny. Um, you know, we have to be able to quiet. And it's it's that identity part. That identity part is very attached to the 3D, to the left side of the brain, to the processes. And, and it will chitter chatter all day. And when we, and that's where it's like, you know, getting into the integration piece of how do we integrate? Because just know, like being in that place where it's like, okay, we know we have to do this, but then how do we do this? And for me, that's always been like through the energy, through the body, through the different pieces, through the mindset. Um, but we have to be able to hold both places. Now, I know that's not for everyone because some are just. But it whatever. is for you and it is for me. And it is for those of us who have these, this background and these credentials and we're also being called to something else. Here's the thing that I learned a long time ago. You know, you took the Neo whenever, a year ago, and I was just looking at it again today. So I want to pull that real quick because there's something I wanted to share with you. This is almost, this is like 13 months since I took the Neo. Yeah. By the way. So your openness. So remember openness to experiences is the hallmark of the creative personality. It's also highly heritable. It's the personality factor that I've linked to spiritual intelligence, intuition, imagination, innovation. And here's the thing about people who score, and by the way, your score is like very high. You know, one, I'm going to say like in a room of a thousand people, there may be like five or six who have higher scores than you do. So you have a very unique aspect to your personality that sets you apart as an innovator and as somebody who is sort of positioned to bring in new technologies, new ideas and innovations into your field to change your field. But here's the thing about innovators. Nobody knows what to do with us until we bring through the thing that people can't live without. That's interesting. And so you can feel like an ugly duckling or the odd duck or the tall poppy or, you know, fill in the blank because you're, you're so different from everybody else in the population in terms of your openness, your consciousness is wide open. You have the profile of a channel and what you're channeling through is something that is novel, unique, useful, game-changing, life-changing. So it occurs to me that part of the process talking about results is is kind of a documentation of what you're doing with people not just you but all of us because we've been operating sort of behind the scenes on all the magic that we're creating in people's lives because it's not evidence-based practices it's not empirically supported treatments what are what's your take on that no that's really interesting because that was a huge transition for me that I had to get into the right alignment thought processes in terms of like sharing client transformations because we come from a world oh, where you yeah. don't. Oh, oh you no, don't. No. You cannot. It's, it's, illegal. it's illegal. Like you will get into massive trouble. And so now, yes, there's lawyers and contracts and other pieces of the puzzle, uh, right? That help support. But then once I realized that when I share client transformations, it is with the purpose of inspiring hope and change. And when we're coming from a frequency of, I know that whoever needs to hear this is probably watching right now, or they're going to watch, then we're coming from a completely different energy. And it's not about proving how cool I am or how good I am at my job, <laughs> right? It's about 
people being able to wake up and transform and change using diverse modalities that actually make a really big difference. And I think that's the piece of the puzzle that you asked before. I, and I did listen to your episode, I claim probably like ethereal change. It happens much quicker. Yes. Then what not quantum? Is that what you're referring right. to? We're not going to use quantum anymore. Like that's like, <laughs> no. Right. Etheric. Yes. And that yeah. that's the working in the etheric realm in the etheric space. It's not space, it's substance. Um, we can bring about transformation so much more quickly. And it's so important, I think, for us to understand that that's actually the X factor. It's our consciousness. that's the X factor. I love that. Oh my God, this is so magical. It's magic. I have a question for you about the Neo. How did you, I know it's been a while, but how did you change as a result of learning about your personality? Well, I, lo I love that I scored high on neuroticism and I, <laughs> only love loved, <laughs> I only loved it after you described it and explained it to me. And I was like, oh, that makes all the sense in the world. Uh, so it actually brought on this different lens of looking at my intricacies yeah. that make me magical mm -hmm. without looking at it from a place of judgment or criticizing. And I think that's the tendency. Yeah. So I think that was a huge shift. Well, you know, neuroticism for our listeners is sensitivity to stress and how emotionally reactive you are. And we know that our consciousness gets channeled through the nervous system. All of those aspects of neuroticism, anxiety, depression, anger, um, self-consciousness, impulsivity, and just vulnerability to stress, all of those are based in the nervous system. And the good news is that you can actually transform the nervous system to support your consciousness being able to flow through a clear channel. And wouldn't it be so surprising that that was exactly the chapter that I wrote in the book? It's like the nervous I love system right in. And it's so, you know, it's like, that's where I have, you know, a high factor, however you say it. Mm -hmm. And that is also how I truly support clients is so that they can hold more from a regulated state to attract more because we are prone to high stress, which then affects the emotions and affects the physical body. Yeah. I mean, emotional self-regulation, regulating your nervous system. That's something that I know you just are so masterful at. And like, like me, I used to score very high on neuroticism. And the good news is that over time, as you practice, it's one of the most malleable of all of the personality factors is what you do with your brain. The brain is such a miracle. And I'm so grateful that you are so masterful with it. Thank you so much. I love that. That's the whole malleable piece. I know. So what do you have coming up next? Absolutely. Well, um, I have been doing some masterclasses called Health is Wealth, and they are combining energy work, work with somatics and movement. I have a movement medicine membership that people are going to be able to join. Uh, which is just going to, it's, it's going to be using all of the diverse tools and trainings to help clear your channel. Right. I mean, that's really the bottom line for the new earth leaders. And right now um, I am building for embody your wealth. It is my group program where I truly treat pe I teach people how to um, regulate and balance the physical health components uh, for like nervous system regulation, but also the internal ecosystem. We touch on mindset and emotional resilience so that you can operate and serve your clients and run your business from a state of flow rather than like anxiousness. And it's beautiful. It's so amazing. Good. Such it important so work. Yes. Hey, we're going to drop your links in the show notes so people can follow you and find you and connect with you because really what I've been seeing more and more is how important it is for us to be focusing on regulating the nervous system. The nervous system is what creates the clear channel and Dahlia is one of the best at helping people regulate nervous system so that you can be in flow so that you can channel wealth consciousness and all kinds of high frequency prosperity in your life. Thank you Thank so much you. for joining us today. You are so welcome. Thank you for having me. Big love. <laughs> I'll see everybody next time.